So uh, welcome to my little speech here. Um, I will try to give you a view, a little bit technique on the one side, but also the, the business side, how the technology will improve or change or enhance various businesses. So my question would be, if you would say an intelligent computer system, what would you suggest, what, what is an intelligent computer system for you? What kind of an ability should, ha should a, an, an intelligent system have? Let's say you're working, you have your little office, and you have a job, you do some whatever, selling, or construction, whatever. What would be intelligent in your room? What, what, what would the computer do for you intelligent? Or anybody else? What would be intelligent? Right? Something else? Make decisions. Good. Make decisions. So that means make decisions when I'm not there. So I can leave my office and he's working and nobody recognizes that I'm not there. Brilliant. That's intelligent in my way, in my view. I will view how technology has developed in the past and will develop in the future. I try to summarize on that chart here. We're coming from formal data processing and formal data storing. That means all the Boolean capabilities. And in this time, before 2000, we were at the understanding that programs have to be intelligent. Data is important. But then slowly we came to the conclusion that data Data have some, some information in it, but data by itself, that's not very intelligent. And programs, well, the maximum they are as intelligent as the programmer which is programming. So, so that's not really the, the way of, of doing it. And so then there came some new ideas like neural data handling. Now, it was kind of having a second filter on the Boolean operations, having an area where you have a, po a possibility of pattern recognition of some workflows, intelligent workflows, and you try to combine the two things. But there was also a big fight that the neural, the neural uh, strategy said, well, we do everything on neural computing, and the Boolean side said, we do everything on Boolean. And it turned out that it didn't work on, on, on each side. So then the idea of artificial intelligence came up because this neural computing has some abilities which are helping you in, in many instances, like learning capability, pattern recognition capability. So the term came up, artificial intelligence. And we also have to understand that the logic, the intelligence, is not a static something. It's not a something I program. I can't program intelligence. This is an interaction. It's an interaction. I mean, if two people sitting here, okay, we can say they are intelligent. Maybe they have a smart system that keeps them alive, doesn't forget to breathe and stuff like that. But intelligence, if we would view it in the view of business application, only happens if interactive, if communication starts. If you exchange your knowledge, then something new creates. So dialogue, dialogue between the system is very important. And that's not really the strengths of our systems today. So what we say is we have to bring that in a, in a new type of hardware operating system environment so that the Boolean, the Boolean solutions, the neural solutions and the new solutions coming into one migrated area and then it's like the brain. I mean our brain has capability of doing Boolean operations, analyzing images and so on. We don't have different hard disks and softwares to do that. It's all in one. So that's really where we have to go. And if we, if we achieve that, then we get a much higher quality on data because now the data are, are seen in the 100% in the, in the, in the, in the of truth, so to say. So you see everything. It's not only a statistic portion. You're working from the full set of the information. So, well, as I said, 
artificial intelligence didn't work, but if you listen to uh, people like Mills Davis, Mills Davis is a very popular person in the United States. He is pushing very hard on Web 2.0, the community, semantic web and everything. And he brought it very nicely on a point. He said, the future will be that everything rotates around semantic. And semantic stands for content oriented. The content, the information which is there already, you, we have to understand and get solutions which can, which can uh, validate and understand the content. So the answer to that one answer, and there are many, many different uh, solutions out there, well, not so many, but a few. One of them we call AI1, and AI1 stands for autonomic intelligence. Because that's really what we, what we like to have, autonomic, selbstregierend. That's, that's really the, the, the magic word. It's not that I have to tell the system. The system has to tell itself. The system has to understand the data I'm delivering like it understands the language, the meaning of the language. It understands the pixels, the image, and then learns by itself from inside and not from outside. That's really the point. I will talk a little bit how this new technology has to be located. Well, the technology is delivered as a kind of a library and an API. It's more a language than anything else. So that means um, it's on a very low level. So it's on the level like operating system hardware. And, and then the clients, the customers, are enabled to put their intelligent solutions on top. Now, the difference between now and in the past is that if you would do facial recognition, you would have to buy a library from a supplier XY. If you would do uh, fingerprint recognition, you have a, se a second source for the library. And if you like to do a semantic system, then you have a, a third source for, for the library. Here, this library contains all of it. So you can have all the different inputs from pixel, video, sound, whatever you have, and then build your solution on top. And that will solve a lot of problems, but mainly it will create a standard which is floating through from left to the, to the right with all the, the, the needs of interfacing and the requirements we have. And certainly, you know, systems like that are searched in a, in a broad area of uh, uh, vertical market. I'm not really an expert in stock exchange, but we found out that at South Athens, they have searched 15 years, used a whole set of mathematics, like a Fourier transformation and everything and everything, in order to get what is noise and what is pattern. And we found out putting it to our AI1 data space just came out inherently because it's there. I mean, if, if we can see it, it's there. It's just the method we had previously, which didn't lead us directly to those patterns, have the methods to find it. <laughs>